Hello, my friends. It's Peggy Lou, and I'm crazy for retro. I hope you're having a good day. Today, I'd like to show you what I decided to try to do by putting out a lot of the vintage items that we started liking a couple years ago and the collection of more tropical and African animals have started to show up here in our living room. It's been fun. I never thought I would do that. I always wanted to stick with Minnesota animals. But that's no fun and besides there's so many cool things that they made that were tropical in the 60s. So let's go look at what I came up with. I'll start over here first with the coffee table. The swan is something that I have not shown yet. It was from a friend's father's estate sale. His wife had passed away, so he did eventually move to an apartment and had an estate sale, and our friends notified us about it. And I picked out this one. I can't remember what it was, but pretty reasonable. It's uh, made in Japan. It's just stamped on the bottom, made in Japan. So this one is kind of an off-white, and it does have some orange and black detailing on it. It was in very nice condition and later after having it for a while my friend called and said she found a pair of mini swan candle holders that actually went with it. It's funny I've never seen that uh, set anywhere where it had two candle holders, but that's kind of neat. I can't remember if I already said to you that it's it's an off-white. It's not as white as my milk glass. On the couch, I decided to just take out newer pillows. These are not vintage, but I thought it would be fun to tell you that I thrifted the two floral ones on the sides and the green zigzag one in the middle. The striped ones I purchased many years ago, shortly after we had gotten our couch. I wanted orange pillows on a red couch, which sounds crazy, but I did want to mix orange in here in the summer, so I'm still using them. It's kind of a grow grain ribbon these pillows and I've always really liked them and what I do and many of you must do is stuff them inside of other pillow cases pillow covers I ordered several pairs over the years on the internet to change for holidays and seasons and it's really nice just to be able to use your other pillows for something new. This is something new that I haven't shown you yet. It's a collection that I started many years ago. I thought the miniature splatter or drip glaze little tiny vases were very fun and I was finding them really cheap at the thrift stores. But there have been times when I've seen one or two at an antique shop and if they were pretty cheap I might weaken and get it if it was pretty unique but I don't want to pay a lot of the prices that I've been seeing uh, let's see if we can get it to focus here mm. are you gonna give me trouble huh it's the mirror that causes that the mirror is looking at the things in the background, so it's okay now. So I've had a lot of these for probably 10 years. And like I say, now and then I've added one. Uh, the two 
pitcher looking ones that are a little orange splatter on the far right and the far left over there. I just thrifted those this past fall from Bibles for Missions for only a dollar each. So I thought I had a real find there since I had this fun collection. I put a little thrifted tiny egret or swan. You know, I've been calling these very long neck birds egrets because that's what I like to think of them as. I really don't know what they were intended to be. Maybe they were intended to be swans, but I don't think so. They have really, really pointed beaks. I just don't think of those as swans, but maybe a lot of people call them that. This turquoise one up here is very fun, but it's really not a color that I'm using here in the living room, but I'll settle for that up there now just to show you. So that's a very fun collection. I used to show it in the front entrance on our metal mirror that we've had there for years, but there really wasn't enough room on that tiny little shelf. I could only get probably most of those on the bottom row on it, and that was it. So that is a new collection that I thought would be very fun to show to you. Over here are a lot of the same things that I have shown you in previous videos. There's my lion. And I don't know if I've had a chance yet to show you the zebra planter. It was $10 in a very fun antique store that we love going to and we've done two or three videos, I forget how many, uh, Rogers, Minnesota, there's uh, Antique Mall of Rogers. They're on Instagram and Facebook. That was a very fun one with all that gold on it. Kind of looks almost like a trophy type thing. It's really strange, but I love it. It's very fancy. And I did find some very thin, um, kind of a little bit wavy reeds that I purchased quite a few years ago and I wasn't liking them that much, wasn't using them much, but they seem to work good for my attempt here to have more of a tropical look. And I was very happy I saved these up here. I think I will go turn that light out in the corner. It's after seven o'clock at night. So there's not a whole lot of sunlight left, but I'll show you those very curvy sticks. They're a little on the yellow side. So they have been very, very different. But what I've done is add more orange some green, yes, I left a lot of green in here because a lot of the birds I'm going to show you are green or planters, but I brought my uh, very fun, glitzy um, flamingos, one in each side, brought them up, and I've found two or three, yeah, I think three, new footed planters. The one on the far right is new. It's got a fun pattern on it, kind of like a medallion and floral swags, and I really don't know how you're supposed to display that. Are you supposed to have the floral swag out or the diamond? I mean medallion. I don't know. But I was really happy to find that one, and I'll, when I get to the other side I'll show you a couple of new ones over there. So I've decided to use Mel Glass planters that match on each end of the, uh, the shelving here with the books. So there's one over there because I had these two fun parrots. I never remember if these are considered cockatoos 
or cockatiels. I should have looked that up first, huh? But I purchased them, oh, maybe six years ago. At the state fairgrounds, they do have a planter where I could have put a little air plant or something in them, but I've got a lot of plants here just to have a more fun, fun effect with the greenery. And what I decided to do for the hearth is put um, some of my, a couple of my larger pots, three of them, there's actually three of them. I had always been talking about using white beans, dried beans to fill all my planters. That is um, really a wonderful thing to use when you're putting uh, plants, faux plants, in melt glass because with anything dark, a lot of your melt glass can actually start looking really drab. It really shows dirt, unless it's an extremely thick, heavy melt glass. So that's one of the reasons why I started putting in the white beans in the melt glass. But the other reason is I wanted it to look like gravel, and that's what I would be using if I were to be putting faux succulents or cacti in those pots. I decided, though, that it was getting expensive and heavy. I kept asking Norm for more and more bags of beans at the grocery store. <laughs> it's, it's gotten to be quite a bit that I'm using around here. So instead, I got to thinking I have had a bag of orchid bark, but it's really big, big chunks of wood and very hard to push uh, a plant stem like this big thick one here. This is artificial. I've tried growing even mother-in-law's tongues and I haven't had all the best of luck with them. They just don't seem to want to grow. They don't die, but they don't grow either. So they're just in too big a pot, I guess. But I got to thinking about the fact that I should look for something that is much finer in bark. And the more I looked around on the internet, the more I started thinking about uh, terrariums. And then I got to thinking about animals that live in terrarium-like, um, you know, a can big tank. And so I looked at Petco online and just typed in fine uh, bark nuggets. And here was bags of triple washed, um, what they called uh, bedding material for reptiles. So it's supposed to be very, very clean, no sticks, big sticks or anything. So I was really happy I bought a couple of good sized bags and started putting that in pots that I don't want to ruin. And it, it looks more natural than, you know, you don't want to have white beans in a pot, huge pot with a plant like that. You want it to look like dirt. So that's what I've used over here too in the two side big pots with these funny sticks in them. I have no idea what that is, but just tiny little leaves on them. So let's go back. I, I wore, a, wore a very tropical shirt today. It's just full of plant life. It's um, Liz Claiborne. I thrifted it quite a few years back. It's a beautiful material, always pressed. It's really a fun shirt. Thought that would be appropriate to wear today. 
So I have a fish planter here that I think I showed for the spring, but thought it would work great up here with the birds that I did show also in the spring over on the corner round glass table. It's uh, Maddox of California. It was $10, but we had a coupon. They knew it was a good piece. It's also a planter. So there's my two parrot, or not parrots, they're cockatiels, cockatoos. They're fun. And these are the two new ones. The, um, that one I believe on the left, very marbled, thrifted. I think it was $5 at the Goodwill. And one of these, I believe it's that one, is Hager. So that was a nice find. And I just found this one for, hmm, I can't remember. It was in Hutchinson, Minnesota, but boy, was I happy. That one is so nice and detailed. I'll try to see if I can figure out the price, but it was really reasonable in an antique shop. Very happy find that, to find that. I've shown this, I think a year ago. These parrots I found for, I think they were like $7, six or seven in a small antique shop. And I don't see any identification, but don't they remind you of Hager? Because if you did watch a thrift haul, no, sorry, not a thrift haul. It was a antique shop in Hutchinson, Minnesota. We were filming that like four different times. We had put out a video at the Main Street Antiques in Hutchinson, Minnesota. I spotted this very large teal colored uh, parrot and it is Hager. I don't see I don't see any Royal Hager um, anywhere on the bottom is probably open so it would have been probably a sticker that was on it but I did not like the teal color in here there isn't anything in here that's that blue or green. So some of the books are not quite green green. They're, they're a little more blue green, but this was just too deep of a green. Oh, wow. Our light just came on automatically. It's on a timer. Oh boy. Didn't think that was going to happen. It's daylight savings time. So it's coming on way too early. We have to adjust that. But Norm yesterday, he put one coat on it and it's not real high gloss yet. And you can even maybe see on the top of his head, you can see a little bit of texture of the blue green on the top of his head. He needs to do another coat, but he's very good because he just does it real finely, you know, stays his distance so he doesn't get any dripping but you need to wait 48 hours before you ever try to spray something again unless you want to do it every 20 minutes but i love it i am so much happier i couldn't wait for him to get that done we finally got um like 58 degrees yesterday and it's been like 61 today it's supposed to be getting nicer and nicer so i'm really happy with that very much so. They put a second swan up here, the smaller one. I've had the bigger one here before in previous living room videos. But I did want to make sure I point out this wonderful long, long leopard. This was from um, Up Your Alley. Again, we did some videos on that wonderful retro vintage shop that we've had way too much fun at. 
It is a TV lamp. It is just something I want to use for a planter. He is looking like he's going after that horse, but all my animals get along very nicely. So that is that side. I found this adorable monkey figurine, so modern, last summer at a thrift store up north of us that was clearing out everything for some reason and everything was half price. He was marked $4, so I got him for two. And then I saw Barb on Jeffrey's Real Nifty Vintage channel. She was with him and she picked up two monkeys, this one and one in a little different position in a antique shop, I believe they were in, looking for bargains there. And it was not black, it was a different color. I forget if it was a wine color, or dark green or what it was, but I'm pretty tickled to have found him for $2. I really knew nothing about him. I did not know if he was vintage. He just looked so cool and modern. So that was something I wasn't gonna pass up for $2. So I've just got a couple planters. This is a new planter too. It is so dark a green, olive green on the bottom, and then it gets um, a drip effect on the top. I kind of weakened grabbing that one in Hutchinson because I didn't know if I'd be finding very many footed green planters. And that's our um, purchase TV, vintage TV lamp we found last fall in St. Paul, Minnesota. Really, really got a very good deal on that. So it was fun to put him out. There's a little elephant. I just thrifted this for, uh, I think it was $2.99 at the Goodwill. It is a vintage Kahlua decanter. And there's quite a few of them for sale. I've found quite a variety of comments about it being from anywhere from the 50s to the 70s. One was even earlier than that, which is crazy that they've got so many different years, but it's in minty condition. When I saw that, I thought, oh, that is about as tiki as you can get. Now, I do not collect tiki things, never really have. We don't have any tiki bar any bar for that matter, our house is too small. But I just put a little air plant in the top. None of them that I saw on the inter internet had any kind of fancy stopper in it, so it just must have been a cork. But that's pretty funny that there were so many of them for sale and a big variety of prices too. I'd say an average price could be like 30 to $40 average maybe. Some of them were pretty high. But I thought you'd think that was fun to see that. Well, I was gonna turn out this lamp that came on underneath this plant, but it doesn't show as well. So I will leave the lamp on. I have had this heavy drip glaze 60s California original planter for, you know, probably 10 years. And it had three big holes in it. I never used a rope hanger or anything like that. I just never ended up hanging it up anywhere. I've always wanted to. So I asked Norm if he would do a project for me among all the others I'm always asking him for. He was very kind to go to the hardware store and I tagged along and we looked at chain because I've had these two long beaded plant hangers that I made 
many years ago on each side. And I even used to have another one. I'd have the long ones on the very edge where you see a hook up there. And these are the shorter ones. I actually had four of these big heavy duty plant hangers. And I decided not to use the two longer ones anymore because I started liking putting sconces over here with the birds on them. It's not that I can change to something flat over here if I wanted to and go back to using more of the hooks up there. But at one time many years ago when I first wanted these plants hanging up, I probably did have a white chain going across and, hang, and hung something simple in the middle here. But I decided to go with gold chain on this pot where Norm had to pry open the first loop there, which was a lot of fun for him to pry, pry open three of them and, and then uh, hang it up there. And we didn't tighten the top one real well because we want to take it off. For Christmas, we're not going to obviously have anything in the window when we have our Christmas tree there. So I am very happy with how it worked out. It's a lot higher than the other two pots. And right now, I just ended up with two plastic black pots there. Those are real succulents growing. But it's, it's heavy, and Norm was really worried about the weight tugging on the two outside hooks. So I said, okay, well, let me take out my California planters that I had on each side in orange and just put those for now in a couple black plastic pots that I had. I'm going to go look for um, a couple of orange plastic ones that might look nice, maybe. But he said he didn't seem to mind as much now. And I want you to know this is a faux philodendron, probably from Hobby Lobby. It looks real enough to me. I don't have to water it over this lamp. And it, of course, is going to be much lighter because I don't have any dirt in there. That would be a disaster if something ever gave, gave way up there. So I'm, I'm very pleased and thought that was very nice of Norm to help me with that project looks more balanced. I always kept showing these videos of the living room and looking over there thinking that's kind of a big hole there so I like it much better. On uh, this little green shelf I kept it up here but I brought out two little funny horse figurines. Uh, the one on the right though is actually a planter. It's got an open top in it. I thought about sticking some funny feathers in there but Decided not to, but this little guy is really cute. So modern. Such a sweet face. Really neat. I wish I knew who did it. Maybe it's something worth money, huh? More than I paid for it. I don't know, but I like them. I'm going to keep them. Down here, I've never shown you I'm pretty sure I've never shown you this face. This was one of the first swan vases I ever bought, or planters. So I had this for quite a few years. I got a pretty good deal on it, and I think it's Maddox of California. I'll put a little note on the left. If I'm wrong, I want to show you something else that I just thrifted at the Goodwill. It was $2.99, and I am so surprised at this design. Um, it is considered a dolphin slash koi. If you look that up and say candle holder, uh, you will find the stick candle holders that are very vintage, and they're quite tall and have a fancy tail, but this has no markings on it anywhere, 
but it's just such pretty glazed um, pottery and it has the, the eye is glazed very nicely too it's so beautifully done I can't believe if this is new I don't know why I just don't think it is and the top part of it is actually quite ribbed all the way down and the glaze is just really pretty on the top too but I decided to put one of my orange pillars in there just to show you how it would look so I think that's kind of tropical to share I hope you like that I was pretty excited that was just a week ago I found that crazy one wouldn't have been neat to find two of them wow that would have been fun down here is a phone it's just a push button one but my brother just gave this to us and he also gave us another top um, to put on the mechanism underneath that's a red phone so we'll try to see he said he said here here's a red case you can probably swap it out on the beige phone that I gave you so <laughs> he's pretty generous isn't he this is the cutest little lucite smiley face pen holder that I found several years ago thought he was pretty cute actually this is a floaty pen it says Roy Rogers and trigger and if you turn it on the other side it's clear the pen is clear but there is a scene of a fort that um, you know tall wooden fence and a fort and Roy Rogers and trigger if you tip the pen are they float down all along the uh, the side of the fort fencing never tried to sell it it there are people out there that collect vintage floaty pens come on trigger let's get going here there you go giddy up this is called a dial list it is a vintage metal bottom and plastic top uh, never been used I think I even got it in the box I think the box is downstairs in a different drawer but that was a pretty fun thing to find in in an antique shop many years ago when we first started liking retro things so it's just been on the desk downstairs we have a very nice retro desk with the same laminate top on it and I'd love to have it up here I used to have it in the picture window but after I found that beautiful council table the desk got sent to the basement but yeah this is very fun so you just dial the number I mean the letter that you want to look up somebody's last name and hold it there and it will open let's see if I can do that um, A B C D E I guess it pushes sideways and then it, you push that little lever sideways and then it opens to where the people's last name would be starting with a C or I actually dialed E and F that's what I dialed that's how that works and it's by Bates manufacturing company Bates they're still making things for the office I don't know thank you again everyone for hanging out with me today like so many of the youtubers say it's very nice of you to be watching our videos. We appreciate all of you and your wonderful comments. I apologize for not getting back to everybody. It's overwhelming at times. And I have so many other things I have to do too. But I thank you so much for all the fun things you tell us about your likes and your collections. So I hope you have a wonderful day. And we'll see you again soon. Bye now.